Balaam. The angel of the Lord frequently appears in the Balaam story. Angels were created to serve God and his people. But can we identify a specific spirit being called the angel of the Lord? Who is this angel? There are numerous accounts of angels briefly manifesting themselves in the physical realm and making face-to-face -face appearances with people who God was actively working with at the time. These accounts can be found all throughout the Bible. When looking at the scriptures in the Old Testament that describe human interactions with angels, there is one being that stands out above all the others for several different reasons. In the Bible, Balaam was a wicked prophet who stood out. Despite his wickedness, he was not a false prophet. That is to say, God did communicate with Balaam, and he was given genuine prophecies to utter. However, Balaam's heart was not right with God, and he eventually revealed his true colors by betraying Israel and leading them astray. This was the moment when God struck Balaam dead. The Israelites were in the plains of Moab when the crisis started to unfold. Along the way, they had faced a large number of adversaries and emerged victorious from a number of conflicts. They had the intention of going through Edom via the most direct path. Their petition was turned down, despite the fact that Edom was descended from Jacob's brother Esau. After a battle in which God granted them victory over Edom and Moab, they had a strong sense of self-assurance. They set up camp close to the Jordan River and had a view of the promised land across the water. On the other hand, they ran into some resistance as they advanced into Canaan. The people of Ammon and Moab who owned land that bordered the promised land made the decision to thwart the Israelites' plans and hired a soothsayer from Syria to help them achieve their objective. His name was Balaam. Moab's king was Balak, son of Zippor. He had witnessed what had occurred to the Amorites, and his people were terrified of the Israelites. As a result, the king decided to hire Balaam, son of Beor, to come and curse the people of Israel in order for Moab to defeat them. In an area where the false god Baal was worshipped, Balaam was essentially a prophet for hire. So Balak sent messengers to Balaam, requesting that he come and curse these people. I am aware that those you bless are blessed, while those you curse are cursed. Balaam apparently had a reputation for achieving results through the words he spoke. But the Lord has a perfect reputation. If he says something will happen, it will happen. This is significant, because God had promised Abraham many years before that he would make him into a great nation. He would bless those who bless Abraham and curse anyone who treats Abraham with contempt. Genesis chapter 12 verses 2 and 3 These promises would be extended to Abraham's blood descendants, the Israelites. Balak's plan was thus doomed from the start. If God is determined to bless you, no one's words can override him. Balak sent senior citizens from Moab and Midian to Balaam with fees for divination in hand. Balaam met with them. It is important to point out that even though Balaam engaged in forms of witchcraft that were forbidden by God, he still refused to travel with these individuals until he heard back from the Lord. It seems that the implication is that he intended to do whatever God told him to do, regardless of how good the money was. And that is exactly what he did at every point in the story. So that night, God graciously condescended to appear to this sorcerer, who generally was not committed to living in a manner pleasing to him. Balaam relayed what he had been asked to do to Israel, and God warned him not to curse his people, whom he had blessed. Balaam did as he was told, and sent his guests away empty-handed. But Balak would not accept no for an answer. He sent officials who were more numerous and higher in rank than the others, promising an even greater reward if Balaam would curse Israel as requested. Numbers chapter 22 verses 20 to 24 God came to Balaam at night and said to him, If the men have come to call you, 
get up and go with them, but you shall still do only what I tell you. So Balaam got up in the morning and saddled his donkey and went with the leaders of Moab. But God's anger was kindled because he was going, and the angel of the Lord took his stand in the way as an adversary against him. Now he was riding on his donkey, and his two servants were with him. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, and his drawn sword in his hand, the donkey turned off the path and went into the field. But Balaam struck the donkey to turn her back toward the path. But the angel of the Lord stood in a narrow path of the vineyards, with a stone wall on this side and a stone wall on that side. Rise and go with them. God did not change his mind. Balaam would not now be in the will of God if he went with Balak's messengers. He was first forbidden and afterwards commanded to go. The only explanation is that satisfactory is that, while attempting to maintain an external obedience to this supreme will of God, his heart was lusting after the riches offered to him by Balak. Morgan So despite his claims to follow the Lord's instructions, which he did when it suited him, it appears that Balaam was a mercenary prophet at heart. Though God had given Balaam permission to accompany the elders of Moab, God knew that the man had no regard for Israel and was willing to curse Israel for the reward, despite God's instructions. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road with a drawn sword in his hand, it turned off the road into a field. Balaam beat it to get it back on the road. Then the angel of the Lord stood in a narrow path through the vineyards, with walls on both sides. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, it pressed close to the wall, crushing Balaam's foot against it. So he beat the donkey again. Then the angel of the Lord moved on ahead and stood in a narrow place where there was no room to turn, either to the right or to the left. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, it lay down under Balaam, and he was angry and beat it with his staff. Then the Lord opened the donkey's mouth and it said to Balaam, What have I done to you to make you beat me these three times? Balaam answered the donkey, you have made a fool of me. If only I had a sword in my hand, I would kill you right now. The donkey said to Balaam, Am I not your own donkey which you have always ridden to this day? Have I been in the habit of doing this to you? No, he said. Numbers chapter 22 verses 23 to 30. This duplicity within the prophet resulted in the peculiar and amusing scene between an animal with keen spiritual sense and a human being who is spiritually as dumb as a rock. The following conversation which takes place between a faithful donkey and an unfaithful prophet is not to be missed. Then the Lord opened Balaam's eyes, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road with his sword drawn. So he bowed low and fell face down. The angel of the Lord asked him, Why have you beaten your donkey these three times? I have come here to oppose you because your path is a reckless one before me. The donkey saw me and turned away from me these three times. If it had not turned away, I would certainly have killed you by now, but I would have spared it. Balaam said to the angel of the Lord, I have sinned. I did not realize you are standing in the road to oppose me. Now if you are displeased, I will go back. The angel of the Lord said to Balaam, Go with the men, but speak only what I tell you. So Balaam went with Balak's officials. Numbers chapter 22 verses 31 to 35. Finally, God opened Balaam's eyes to see the angel of the Lord who was blocking his path. As Balaam lay face down in worship, the Lord explained to the prophet that his dumb donkey had saved his life. The angel of the Lord standing in the way with his drawn sword in his hand. The stance in the sword made the will of God clear. In this action of the angel of the Lord, God told Balaam, Don't go to Balak. 
turn back now. But Balaam would not listen. Your way is perverse before me. The word perverse carries the idea of going the wrong way in a rash manner. This was exactly Balaam's problem. Surely I would also have killed you by now and let her live. The angel of the Lord had the ability and the authority to bring God's judgment against Balaam, and almost did. In a sense, the donkey rescued the prophet from judgment. Balaam's name and story became infamous, and he is referred to several times in the New Testament. Peter compares false teachers to Balaam, who loved the wages of wickedness. 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 15 Jude echoes this view, associating Balaam with selling one soul for financial gain. Finally, Jesus speaks of Balaam when he warns the church in Pergamum of their sin. There are some among you who hold to the teaching of Balaam, who taught Balak to entice the Israelites to sin so that they ate food sacrificed to idols and committed sexual immorality. Revelation chapter 2 verse 14 Satan's tactics haven't changed all that much. If he cannot curse God's people directly, he will try the backdoor approach, and idolatry and sexual immorality are his go-to temptations.